and welcome to another episode of Trope Cast. We'll move on to a new trope now. Flintstone theming. We're still on naming conventions. Now this is where funny names start to be brought in. So, for anime and manga. Squid Girl. The main character constantly spouts out aquatic puns like What the Gill? Or Let's get cracking, cracking. In the English dub, the name You've Got to Be Squidding Me even made it into the dub. In Japanese, she's very fond of ending her sentence with Janaika. Basically, instead of saying X is Y, she says, Isn't X Y? Mostly because it's last two kana are uh, aika i.e. squid yeah, squid digi squid digazo despite cultivating an image of oju azukai azuki azusa in Hineko, the hentai prince and the story cat often uses animal metaphors frequently bizarre ones Usually she's secretly an animal-obsessed middle-class girl whose apartment doesn't allow pets. Ellis, in Play Dance of Elementalers and Magic Nights, whose hobby is cooking, frequently threatens to turn people into bizarre dishes. All of them are actually just metaphors for beat them savagely along the lines of make mincemeat out of the protagonist start complimenting her on her electric taste in food once she's used her threats the, the phrase I'm going to make mincemeat out of you is a common threat in real life so yeah okay In DNA, Brand New Animal, many well-known real-world businesses have beat people versions like Burger Kitty for Burger King. Boost people versions, sorry. Asian animation. That's what anime is. Several words in Noon Boy and the Super 7 are altered to fit the theme naming of either Poobaluba, the setting's name, or Boris or Guris, the species of the main cast. Everybody, every Bori slash every Guri, nobody, no Bori, cherries, tuba cherries, trumpet, Luba trumpet and hilarious of course tubalarious <laughs> really comic books the adventures of Captain Carrot and his amazing zoo crew were set in Follywood California in the United Species of America and it didn't stop there. Marvel Apes and its simian themed naming. Same goes for Peter Porker, the Spectacular Spider Ham, which is essentially a Marvel version of Captain Carrot. Silex and the City has an endless string of puns on Silex, Flint, and Evolution though the latter mostly is used for fun with acronyms, and the former rarely appears in names of any sort. The Disney movie, sorry, the Disney Mouse and Duck comics have endless mouse and duck puns depending on which the specific part of modular of the modular franchise is involved in the story plus puns related to other animals if the story setting needs it. 
and music covered by Katie Curran. Picks are largely a bird fit, preferring to stick to visual humour for its establishing themes. But Monsters Inc. couldn't resist throwing some of these in the Daily Glob, the Stalk Don't Stalk sign, and of course the eponymous energy company and university. The Cars franchise is another one who couldn't resist this, as everything is themed after vehicles, but mainly cars. A notorious example happens in Cars 2, at the beginning of the climax in London. Blank have been tied up by the, have been tied up the lemons inside of the big Bentley the big Ben Zootopia flat out revels in it a majority of the signs billboards and store names contain animal puns on a real world company all artists in Judy's main uh, music library, The Beagles, Black Sable, Katy Perry, Destiny's Cub, U2, Fleetwood Yak, Fur Fighters, Gazelle, Guns on Rodents, <laughs> Hyena Gomez, K9 West, and Mick Jaguar. I've never noticed any of that, <laughs> and I've seen the film a fair few times. <laughs> In addition to movie theme, Try Everything, Gazelle's album includes Part of Your Wool, Ara Bunny Night, let it go, and can you feel the fluff tonight? Duke Weaselton sells bootleg DVDs like Wrangled, Wreck It Rhino, and Pig Hero 6, as well as movies that hadn't been released at the time like Miawana, Geographic, referencing the cancelled film Gigantic, so Jurassic and Floatsome 2. <laughs> Films, live action. The Flintstones, of course. When they go to the theatre, there is a logo joke credited to Universal. While an ad reads, Coming soon, Gorge Lucas, Star Wars. The re-recording of the show's theme was credited to the BC-52 and Halle Berry's character is named Sharon Stone. Howard the Duck showed that Howard's homeworld was like this with a duck theme. What the duck? Literature In How the Grinch Stole Christmas Whoville does this with the word who. For example, their Christmas feast involves who pudding and who roast beef. Some bill for same bill for Horton hears a who. Lampshaded in the film by the mayor, who says that putting the word who in front of everything doesn't make it better. No, it actually doesn't. The Berenstain Bears does this with naturally bears in a lot of areas. Many Stalin terms and expressions in Star Darling have the word star in them to the point that there's a glossary at the back of the book to explain them. Oh my stars, come on! Live action TV. The new version of the Mickey Mouse Club, the one from the late 1980s and the early 90s, lampshaded this trope in a reunion special that brought back Annette Funicello, 
and several other alumni from the original 1950s series. A black and white vintage skit shows that the Mouseketeers became so universally popular when the show first aired that everyone was putting a mouse case in front of every third or fourth word. Typical dialogue. Finish your mouse peas and the daughter mouse yuck. <laughs> what? <laughs> That's pretty mouse stupid. <laughs> I'm laughing my mouse get arse off. <laughs> See how ridiculous I just sounded. Then, of course, there was the chant of Miska, Muska, Mouseketeer. Given that the original show premiered during the height of the Cold War, the Slavic sound of those first two words results in a bit of bridge humour. The 1960s Batman series had a bat prefix to the name of every piece of equipment Batman and Robin used. Batmobile and Bat Phone. Fair enough. But Bat Shark repellent spray? That's pretty batshit crazy. No, that'd be silly. It's Bat Repellent Bat sp- Shark Repellent Bat Spray. Is that next to the back carousel reversal spray? Mama's family. Many sites and businesses in Raytown have the name Ray in it, especially when the show went to first run syndication. There's even a Raytown bus line. Take the bus and leave the driving to Gus. And a Ray River where you can cruise on a paddle wheel riverboat, the Ray Queen. Stop saying Ray or the Ray time. Star Trek, countless humour sites on the web have tried to predict how things would go if the dreaded Borg ever assimilated us Earthlings. They always have long lists of common catchphrases into which words like quadrant, implants and irrelevant have been shoehorned as well as the word burger being respelled borger yeah do you want to go to borger king come on (laughs) withers of waverly place uses whiz as a prefix a lot lampshaded in one episode where Mason calls an echo a whiz echo and tells him it's just an echo and that they don't just put whiz in front of everything right before Jerry screams The whiz emergency whiz light is on The Cybermen of Doctor Who refer to damn near everything they own as a cyber Fill in the blank. Dinosaurs has characters whose names are fossil fuel and petroleum company themed. We have Earl Sinclair. Earl is also the southern pronunciation of oil. Ethel Phillips, Roy Hess and BP Richfield. Sigmund and the Sea Monsters. This Croft children's show about a family of goofy sea monsters had constant sea puns, including watching the television, uh, watching the television set, and answering the phone with "Shello." What? <laughs> Hang on. Did I say this was part one? Was like I'm going through this entire thing? 
Oh, what the hell? Pimbles. True to the source, the Flintstones plays this trope to the hilt. With everything being rock and stone puns, such as, for example, Rockula and Frankenstein. Flayton Company. Flintstone and Rubble. Pebbles. Rock Donald, anyone? <laughs> yeah, you. And even Dino, short for Dino. And yet, shock horror, he's a dinosaur. Okay. Radio. Subverted in one episode of I'm sorry, I'll read that again. At the beginning of the sea-based sketch, John Cleese irritatedly recites all the fish puns he can think of right at the start to get them out of the way. I'm not going to read that whole thing. Kippadota's wet dream also gave also goes for the fish puns. It often gets played on the Dr. Demento show. Adota followed this up with Life in the Slaw Lane, which consists entirely of vegetable puns. Video games! The Fallout series manages to pull double duty on this. Everything from before the war is either Atomic This, Nuke That, or some kind of 1950s pop culture reference. While about half of everything after the war is a Mad Max reference. Beginning at the fourth game, or with the fourth game, the Paper Mario series started using written paper jokes, puns, and euphemisms. Plant vs. Zombies uses many plant puns as it possibly can. We start with a relatively mild pea shooter and goes on from there. Pea shoot as one of the plant characters. Songbird Symphony has bird puns everywhere. Splatoon and Splatoon 2 take place in a world of funny animals populated by evolved marine life. And they have a truly epic quantity of fish and seafood puns to go along with it. For example, the names of the Squid Sisters, Tally and Marie, form a pun. On Calamari, Spike and Merch are both street urchins and literal sea urchins. The game selection of weapons includes the killer whale, the stingray, and bits of fish based hold your hippogriffs can be found sprinkled throughout the world. For eel, extra points go to naming the strip mall in Incopolis Plaza, Booyah Base, which manages not only to not only tie in with the game's overall 90s inspired aesthetic but also to keep with the seafood theme Booyah base is pronounced roughly the same as Booyah base um, a French seafood stew Enter the Gungeon as you might guess from the title, is loaded ha! with references to all things gun-related. The law suggests that the setting is the result of a cargo cult. Visually, the mook enemies are mostly ambulatory bullets and shells. Multiple objects are shaped like revolver cylinders. All of the currency is tiny casings. You have items called blanks, 
that clear all projectiles from the screen, and even your health hearts are pairs of crisscross red bullets. Tons. The levels are called chambers. The protagonist who aim has to return to the past and undo a fatal mistake are described as willing to risk everything for another shot. The loading screens say reloading. There's mention in the law of a wizard named Alban Smallball. And then there are the bosses, which include the Ammo Tonda, the Gorgon, the Beholster, and the Cannon Balrog. There are even references to gunfights in the grand old Hollywood tradition. You can dodge roll to avoid being hit and flip tables to use as improvised cover. It's very common in the Pokemon series to see gym leaders and elite four members with real life names that are the same that are at the same time a play on their type of choice. Jasmine with steel types, Brock with rock types, Bugsy with bug types and etc. Hive Swap often does this with troll slang but with insectoid biological and evil pun themes for many real life equivalents. There's Cruel Aid for Kool Aid, Chitter for Twitter, Gorgle, Gorgle for Google. Comma Wriggler for the term bookworm, etc. Ring Fit Adventures is set in a world of fitness, and just about everything is themed after some muscle or exercise. This results in people named Calvin or Dashley, goddesses named Solar Plexia, water wheels that look like dumbbells, temples that resemble big empty gyms. The four elements referring to different types of exercise and so on. Mortal Kombat has a tendency to name the moves of its guest fighters after quotes from their original movies. Dead or Alive 4 has a Halo Spartan as a guest fighter. Just about her entire moveset is named with Halo references and her favourite food is Halo Halo. Really? Web comics. Explained and used in this comic. I'm not going to do that. It's Restaurante Makoto does this with its free Hispanic setting. We got a free Hispanic version of the TV. A hole in the wall. Telephones. Stone tubes that end on Jaguar heads. And the mysterious internet cafe. In Alice and the Nightmare, most things are based on cards. For example, social casts are four card suits. And a team of four suits is a deck. As noted above under Hive Swap, Homestruck leans into this with Alternia. Where everything either references violence and murder, references the bizarre alien biology of trolls and their Lucy, or is referenced by a stilted and technical description. When Eridan makes his debut, it turns out the latter is a class thing, and high bloods do call a fridge a fridge rather than a thermal hole. But special mention goes out to the troll version of Will Smith.
troll Will Smith. No, don't do that. No, no, just don't. Forget I read that. Don't troll Will Smith. Don't. Web videos. Ultra fast pony parodies, defies and lamp chases. Characters will occasionally use insufficiently ponified dialogue for which the captains will criticize them. Then the characters themselves comment on the practice. And for Western animation, the Flintstones is the trope namer. For reasons that should be obvious to anyone who has ever seen an episode between the Stone Age equivalents of modern technology and the rock and stone puns tossed out at a rate of four or five per minute, these jokes are basically the only thing that make the show not the honeymooners. An episode of Robot Chicken lampshaded the fact that rock-based puns sometimes just don't work well. And of course, the Jetsons did the same with futuristic and or planetary themed puns. The Roman holidays did this as well, with the puns being obviously ancient Roman in theme. A Family Guy episode with a Flintstones parody had Stone Age Lois playing the part of Wilma used the word rockgasm instead of orgasm, at which point Stewie and Brian decided they had enough of the Stone Age. Stewie, hey Brian, wanna get the rock out of here? Brian, rock yeah. <laughs> and bonus points to those who can guess what that uh, want to get the rock out of here on rock air yeah, are puns of oh come on you've got to rock and know that what the rock have you been watching rock you <laughs> fine men rock off you rocking idiots <laughs> Futurama either parodies this or just uses it brilliantly by twisting the Planet of Hats concept into providing a different one of these almost every episode, using up every possible joke about shellfish along the way. SpongeBob SquarePants oscillates between everything is replaced with its loose underwater equivalent or completely ignoring its setting. The Fairly Odd Parents special Abracatastrophe landed Timmy Turner in a world where the human race had been replaced by anthropomorphic intelligent apes. The primate-related puns flowed like water, lampshaded at least twice. Timmy, by expressing his desire to wish for a world without puns, and AJ by noting that the Declaration of Independence would sound like an incredibly lame pun if it weren't historically accurate. Why? Because a bunch of apes wrote it in the first place. <laughs> that is appropriate. Fish, please. A cop show set underwater where all the characters were fish. No shit, Sherlock. Seemed to exist solely to make loads and loads of fish-related puns. And then there's Sharky and George. A cop show set underwater where all the characters were fish. Which also seemed to exist solely to make loads and loads of shark-related pun, fish-related puns. The characters in Miss Spider's Sunny Patch Friends replaced the body suffix 
with buggy. Any buggy, some buggy, busy buggy, and so on. The Geronimo Stilton series lives and breathes puns related to rodents and cheese. Right down to the show's title, which has a type of cheese in it. Stilton. My Little Pony's friendship with magic has this in spades. There are towns and cities such as Cantalot, Mainhattan, Appaloosa, like the breed Appaloosa. They say things like every pony and no pony. Trottingham is the birthplace of Pipsqueak. One of the series' minor characters, common expletives include what the hey and fucking the noun. One comic pointed out that using the latter had the unfortunate effect making Applejack's job apple bucking, i.e. knocking fruit out of trees, sound horrible. Ah, uh, yeah. Like you couldn't bucking guess. Which word I'm euthanizing here? Dude, what the fuck? <laughs> Lauren South originally wanted the series to take place in Philly, Delphia, but was forced to change it to Ponyville. The setting of the G3 era director video productions. Philadelphia still gets a few offhand mentions, however. Birds. With an entirely avian except one car was up to its beak in bird puns. These usually manifested themselves in the names of celebrities, e.g. Whipple Will Smith, but also the setting of Birdland and the occasional Any Bird. Monster High uses Ghoul as a substitute for everything possible, though most usually girl. And not just that, MH uses plenty of horror related words to build as many puns as possible around, the th around them. Like in the latest toy line of CG film tie-in called Scarist City of Fright, which is set, as you might have guessed, in a twisted version of the French capital. Even better, the characters use puns and neo neo neologisms specific to themselves as well, Frankenstein being a lost in imitation, Frankenstein monster, daughter of the original Frankenstein monster, although the alternate continuity books make her more of a granddaughter, uses voltageous to mean cool, she's out, really put the she, either she amazing puns, or shoeful puns, sh shoeful puns, oh god, depending on if the viewers like puns or not. Swap Cat did this with mega everything. The Snorks is a great example of this. They have shellivisions, not televisions. The Sensibles love their puns focusing mostly on economics and finance with some superhero jokes thrown in. Mixels is in reference to the fusion dance except aspect of the show. Themes various objects, thoughts and ideas around combining two real world items into one new unique one such as a coconut apple, coconut apple trees and ice half pipes. Ice half pipes. You're going with that, really? 
Bojack Horseman is set in a world full of humans and funny animals. And so does there are many animal themed parodies of celebrities and businesses. One big example is Quentin Tarantulino. One notable exception was one episode that featured loads but like an animal version which makes it all more all the more funnier since it is written like the Home Depot logo. The Smurfs seem to have their own language with the prefix Smurf for everything. This was spoofed in Robot Chicken a lot. What the Smurf are you talking about? <laughs> the Adventures of the Gummy Bears did a similar thing with the word gummy, using it in many names and places. Fish hooks did this with fishes, getting results such as Fish Niagara Falls and Fish England. And the Pamela Hamster Centered episodes did this with hamsters. Pamela Hamster lives in Hamsterwood. And she's an actress who has been in shows such as Hamsters of Hamsterly Place and Hamster School Musical. <laughs> Come on, you're really hamstering it up. Greysdale High, an animated show about an all ghoul an all ghoul school which came first Gravedale or Monster High <laughs> Thus the same with the words monster and ghoul adapted to school terminology as with punny names for most of the characters for example Vinnie Stoker a vampire Reggie Moonshroud a werewolf J.P. Ghastly III, a ghoul. Jill Waterman, a creature from the Black Lagoon. And Mrs. Crone, the witch headmistress. Filmation's Ghostbusters do the same with ghost-related names on all of their artefacts, including Ghost Buggy, Skeletoscope, An Asbone, Skeletvision, Skelevator, etc. Return to the Planet of the Apes. In Lagoon of Peril, there is a television news report delivered by the Ape Broadcasting System and commands Dick Huntley in River of Flames. Two apes discuss the new film, The Ape Father. And Invasion of the Underdwellers, the first edition copy of the collective works of the playwright William Apespear is stolen from Cornelius and Zira's house by General Urko's troops disguised as Underdwellers. They also steal the famous painting, the Apia Lisa, from a museum. Okay, so this wasn't part one but was, in fact, the whole page. Don't go ape shit on me. It just means... that next time we go into a completely new category. And that shall be...
under the letter D. And that will be for the given name revealed where someone goes by a fake name and their name is revealed. Next time. Until then though. Thanks for watching. And I will see you then.